want to keep a little extra weight on your back foot when you're edging on a wake skate. The ollie is the first thing that you should learn after mastering edging and sliding. The ollie is the most crucial part of almost every trick you will learn. Weight jumps, shove its, kick flips, and even lift tricks all utilize the ollie, and learning a good ollie from the start will make your progression much faster. After learning the riding positions and how to edge, the ollie is probably the single most crucial part of your wake skate development. Ollieing on a wake skate is very similar to ollieing on a skateboard. All the same concepts apply, and learning it on a skateboard first is going to help you cross over to learning it on the water. Think of ollies as leverage. On a skateboard, your leverage point is your back wheels, and you're popping off your tail, and you're leveraging your board against the ground plane at your back wheels. It's very similar to a wake skate. It's all about leverage. Your feet position should be with your foot all the way on the tail and your front foot a little back from the nose. How far you bring your front foot back from the nose affects your ollie. While you can generate more pop by having your front foot further back, it also makes it more difficult to make the tail come up. Having your front foot further back will give you more area to bring your front foot forward when you're trying to level off. It'll also make the nose of the board pop up higher and quicker, making it that much harder for you to bring the tail up and level off. On a wake skate, the ollie is about leverage, just like a skateboard. The difference is, your leverage point is behind your front foot and further up than it is on a skateboard. So the pop happens a lot slower and a lot later than it does on a skateboard. Your leverage point is just behind your front foot and you're leveraging against the water force. If you think about yourself moving forward at 20 miles an hour and you push down with your back foot in the water, it's going to want to push back. Think of the rhythm of the ollie the same on a wake skate and a skateboard. Because your back foot is behind the leverage point, all your pop comes from your back foot. Because your front foot is in front of the leverage point, your stability comes from the front foot. Your back foot pops down behind the leverage point, making the nose of the board come up. You popping against the water force or the ground plane is what makes the tail want to come up and you using your front foot to push forward and level the board off is what makes the tail come up just as high as the nose. You can get comfortable learning ollies at a little slower boat speeds, straight behind the wakes. You're not going to be able to get as much pop here because of the turbulence from the prop. Turbulence from the prop causes the water force to be less stable and give you less to pop against. But it's a good place to figure things out. A good thing I try to teach people to do when they want to learn how to ollie is ride around with just your front foot on the board. You can pick up your back foot and still be stable riding on just one foot. If you try to do the opposite and pick up your front foot and just ride with all your weight on your back foot, you're going to find the board wants to bounce. As soon as you put pressure behind the leverage point, the nose of the board wants to pop up. That's the base of your ollie, just unweighting your front foot and putting all the pressure on your back foot. Once you weight your back foot and unweight your front foot, the nose wants to pop up. And if you then let your back foot come up, the water force pushes your back foot up. A good ollie is a level ollie, so just the water force alone isn't going to be enough to make the tail come up as high as the nose. Pushing your front foot forward and sucking your back leg up is what makes the tail of the board come up. It's also important to make sure your body stays level. Just because you're popping on the tail doesn't mean you want to lean with all your weight over the tail. Your pop comes from the bend in your legs, so the more you roll your knees forward, the more you're going to be able to push down on the tail. Instead of generating your pop from leaning back, try to think about generating it from pushing your leg down. Once you've got your ollies figured out in between the wakes, you're going to want to learn it out in the flats. The easiest ollie to learn in the flats is probably on your heel side edge. Start, start next to the wake and edge out on your heels about 10 feet. Then you're going to want to flatten off to get rid of the tension in the rope. 
Once you've flattened off, drop your back hand to pull you in line with the rope. You don't want to ollie with both hands on the handle. Having both hands on the handle pulls your upper body sideways to your board. You want your upper body to be in line with your board when you're trying to ollie. It's important to make sure you roll your knees forward and get low before you try your ollie. The more you roll your knees forward, the more bend you'll have in them, and the more you'll be able to pop down on the tail. Also, getting low helps get your center of gravity lower, so it's harder for you to tip over. Edge away from the wake about 10 feet with your knees rolled forward so you're nice and low. Flatten off to get rid of the tension from the rope and drop your back hand to pull you in line with the rope. Now unweight your front foot as you pop down on your back foot. The nose of the board should start to pop up. Once you feel the nose of the board come up, start to unweight your back foot and use your front foot to push the board forward to level it off. The harder you push forward, the more the tail's gonna come up. So start learning your ollies small at first. If you learn to level off small ollies first, it'll be that much easier when you start to take your ollies big to learn to level them off as well. After you've got the heel side ollie figured out, you should try to learn a toe side ollie. Toe side ollies are a little more difficult, because after you land, you have to make sure you stay over your toes so you don't get pulled out on your heels. Edge out about 10 feet away from the wake and flatten off to get rid of the tension from the rope. Drop your back hand and roll your knees forward to get low. To do your ollie, unweight your front foot while you're popping down on your back foot. Try to stay leaning over your toes just a little bit. You don't want to be edging when you're doing the ollie, but you don't want to be getting pulled back over your heels either. Push down on the tail and unweight your front foot. And as the tail starts to come up, bring your back foot up and push your front foot forward to level off the ollie. Once you've got your ollies and the flats figured out, you can start to try taking your ollies re-entry. Re-entry ollies is an easy way to get a little more height under your board. The idea of re-entry ollies is starting outside the wake, riding to the top, and pushing against the wake so you can get extra height off the wake and land back on the downside. Think about that water force pushing up on the bottom of the board. As you leverage against it, that's what makes your board pop up. A re-entry ollie utilizes the added water force of having the wake there. The wake is just water in motion, which adds extra water force to give you more leverage against. The first re-entry ollie you should learn is a frontside re-entry, or with the wake in front of you. Start at the bottom of the wake and just ride up to the top, and as you get to the top, just start to turn your board away from the wake a little bit so you can ollie out. Try to get all the way to the top of the wake to get the maximum amount of pop out of it. Remember, having your knees rolled forward and getting low is going to give you more pop, so try to get nice and low before you try your re-entry ollies. At the top of the wake, pop the tail hard and let the nose come up. As you feel the tail starting to come up, suck up your back leg and push your front foot forward to level the board off. When I do re-entry ollies, I think about pushing the handle a little bit towards the wake to help turn my board away from the wake. This is also a good place to learn how to do shifty ollies where you really use the handle to turn the board one way or the other. After you're comfortable with frontside re-entries, you can try backside re-entries, or at the wake behind you. I find backside re-entries to be a little more difficult, but you can really get a lot of pop out of them if you figure them out. All the keys to the backside re-entry are the same as the frontside re-entry, except now you're going to be pushing off on your toes to get away from the wake. You're also going to be landing on your toes, edging away from the wake when you're done. I find to get the board to level off, it's actually easier to do a little bit of a backside shifty on backside re-entry ollies. So if you take the handle and push it more towards the wake, it's going to help turn your board a little bit shifty and should help you level off a bit too. Anytime you're doing a re-entry ollie, you don't want to take too much speed up to the top of the wake or it's going to be very difficult for you to pop back down and land on the downside. You shouldn't actually think about edging up to the wake, but just drifting from the bottom to the top. The steps are the same. Start just outside the wake 
slowly drift up to the top. And when you're at the top of the wake, think about turning your board away from the wake a bit and snapping an ollie. Unweight your front foot, pop down on your back foot, and level off using your front foot. If you push the handle back towards the wake, it should help you turn your board away and land on the downside, edging away. A lot of tricks are even easier to learn re-entry as you have the added pop of the wake. So get really comfortable doing these and your progression will be a lot faster.